I would say that you know some costs, the, the cost of supplies, the cost of goods has appreciated tremendously. And I think that a lot of borrowers are underappreciating and underestimating that. So what's the number one secret to getting a, the best loan? <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to tell you, the number one secret is, is, is a good deal, right? You know, a lot of our borrowers today, um, especially the new, you know, inexperienced first time investors, um, they, they are really analyzing the deals incorrectly. I think they're looking at it from a perspective of, you know, what's listed on the market today. What are the asking prices versus what is actually sold or has been sold? I think that's very important. Also, I think, you know, a lot of our borrowers today, not a lot, but those who are applying for loans, especially the inexperienced borrowers, they, they under appreciate and underestimate the cost of construction today, supplies, the cost of supplies, the cost of material. I got to tell you, I mean, we have our project, a project of our own right now where I expected, you know, a, a scope of work and a construction budget of about a hundred thousand, hypothetically speaking, and I'm literally at about 220,000. Um, so I would say that, Whoa. you know, some costs, the, the cost of supplies, the cost of goods, has appreciated tremendously. And I think that a lot of borrowers are underappreciating and underestimating that. So I think just being realistic with your numbers, I think knowing what, what's a good deal from a bad deal, I think is really key from a lender's perspective. And of course, an investor's perspective, uh, because that as a lender would make us feel comfortable knowing that there's meat in the bone and that the borrower knows what he's doing from a perspective of investing makes us feel a lot more comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. So how are you guys, um, how, are you, how are you currently changing with the the landscape that's i don't even know liquid water yeah. right now at, at this point right like there's nothing yeah. here in washington or you know feds are raising rates how are you guys changing and adapting to um to that yeah so look i mean a lot of what we used to do uh, and i would say about four months ago a lot of what we used to do was the 30-year rental loans right so our borrowers they were buying properties they were using us for the bridge um, and we were bridging their, their acquisition and their construction. They would reposition the property, rehab it, rent it out, and it ultimately come back to us for a 30 year loan. That was a very, very common theme. Right. Nowadays, especially with the rates, the way in which they've been increasing, a lot of our borrowers, instead of holding on to the properties, which, they, which was their plan, and rightfully so, because of all the inflation and all the appreciation and rents. You know, their plan was to fix up the property and hold on and keep it in their portfolio. But with the rates increasing the, at the pace and at the rate that it has been increasing, a lot of our borrowers today have been repositioning. And, and instead of holding on the, uh, the property into their portfolio, they're flipping it. Um, and I think, you know, from our perspective, when, when we're underwriting and writing a 30 year loan, we want to be careful in the fact that, you know, we're not closing or locking in a rate at, say, hypothetically 5% and then having to. Uh, sell it or pull it on, put it on our line at 7% because then effectively we're losing money. Um, so, you know, we want to make sure that we're underwriting and writing these loans correctly, especially with the appreciation in, in, in an increase in, in the rates. Uh, so we just want to be careful and, and, and kind of tread carefully on that perspective. Yeah. Okay. So basically no, no more doing the, the Burr method right now. You're not, you're not letting them cash out refinance at, you know, pulling, pulling 40 or 50 in, in, in liquidity out of the, out of the house and, and hitting your, uh, your DTIs to, um, too high or debt to equity is too high and, and just keeping yeah. that value real, real streamlined and, and kind of encouraging them to liquidate assets instead of holding them.